Okay, so the last underlying root cause of chronic lower back pain that I want to talk to you about in this series involves helping you address a very specific problem that affects the range of motion of the lower back itself. And what I'm referring to is a problem known as the loss of the lumbar flexion curve. So in this fifth module, I will share with you um, what exactly is the lumbar flexion curve and why it plays such an important role in terms of what it means to have a healthy spine. And I feel that most people and even doctors just have no idea that this problem even exists. And from there, we'll talk about how the loss of the lumbar flexion curve happens in the first place and why it is so important to learn how to fix and restore this motion for the long-term health of your spine. And then lastly, we'll share with you some of our favorite strategies to help you fix and restore this very important movement and that when this problem is indeed solved, it can be one of the absolute biggest game changers in terms of just helping you get rid of this chronic lower back pain very fast and actually help you get back to living the type of life that you want, even if you've been struggling with chronic back pain for years. Okay, so what is the lumbar flexion curve and why is it so important? So to understand what the lumbar flexion curve is, I just want to do a brief review of the different types of motions that your spine can actually create. So the first motion we have is, you know, this forward bending motion, which is known as flexion. You know, if you're bending forward to tie your shoes or something like that, this is again, a motion known as flexion. Uh, your back can also bend backwards, which is known as extension. And then we also have this twisting motion, otherwise known as rotation. And then we have the combination of all of these movements, such as, you know, if you want to flex forward and twist, or if you want to bend backwards and rotate. And all of these motions are very critical to just normal everyday human movement. And when your back is able to perform all of these motions with ease and without pain, then this is the probably the greatest indicator of what it means to have a healthy spine. And this is what we're looking to achieve in, for a lot of our patients. Now, the lumbar flexion curve refers to the forward bending curvature of the five vertebrae of your lower back, which is known as the lumbar spine, when you're trying to form a flexion-based movement that involves you having to bend your back forward, such as, again, tying your shoes or putting in your socks or feeding the dog, where your lower back or your lumbar spine, when it is healthy and doing what it should do, should be able to round forward into this forward bending curve that you see right here. And again, this is what a healthy spine should be able to do. Now, a loss of the lumbar flexion curve is, again, probably the most common but completely overlooked problem that we see for so many of our patients that almost no one knows about. And a loss of the lumbar flexion curve kind of looks like this. So if I try to bend my back or create flexion in my spine to bend forward or tie my shoes or whatnot, then a loss of the lumbar flexion curve is seen when the lower back does not actually round or have the ability to bend forward but rather it stays stuck in a straight or neutral position, or in some cases it might actually stay stuck in a slightly hyperextended position where the curvature is actually reversed. Now, this can cause a ton of problems in your lower back. And not only is this going to restrict the ability for you to do things that involve you having to bend forward, but it can also create a ton of stress and pressure on your spine, which can even lead to even worse pain and worse problems such as bulging discs or herniated discs, or something known as sciatic nerve pain, which are all very severe and significant problems that are problems you do not want to have. So why does this happen? And, and how you know, does, is this lumbar flexion curve lost in the first place? Well, as we talked about in the first four modules, we talked about all the various problems that develop in the surrounding areas of the lower back, such as upper back tightness due to poor posture, core weakness, or hip or quad muscle imbalances, and that the tendency for most people who have these issues is that the body will start to fall into this position known as anterior pelvic tilt, which then subsequently pulls your lower back into this hyperextended position known as hyperlordosis. And what you need to realize is that when your back is stuck in this position for long periods of time, that there are going to be long-term physiological changes that develop along the muscles and the soft tissues, and even the nerves and joints that live within this lumbar region. And as a result of all this constant pressure and stress that is developed on your lower back, what's going to happen next is that your back is going to be exposed to chronic inflammation, which will lead to a buildup of scar tissue, which will then start to bind on top of your muscles, making it very difficult for your muscles to be able to contract and for them to be able to stretch. 
as a result, as well as the fact that since your back muscles are always kind of working so hard to overcompensate for all these other parts of the body, that means your nervous system will adapt by making these muscles essentially stay tight all the time, where they will just get stuck in a permanent state of tightness and spasm. Well, I don't want to go into too far details of the exact physiology of, the, of, of these problems in this particular video. All you need to understand is that when the back has been under all the stress for all this time, is that your body will start to form a bunch of knots or a bunch of kinks as a byproduct of all the tightness and inflammation that your back has been exposed to. And one of the best ways to try to explain, you know, why this is such a problem is, you know, imagine this band here represents not just my back muscles, but all of the muscles that sit in the back of my body from my head all the way to my toe, which we commonly refer to as the posterior chain of tension. And this is how you want to view your body, not looking at it through a lens where just looking at your hips or your back or shoulder individually, but rather as one interconnected unit and system that has to work together to create movement. And that if this band here is long and flexible enough, as you can see here, then I should be able to bend forward with relative ease. And as you can see, specifically my lower back or my lumbar spine should be able to get into this flex and rounded position with relative ease. However, if I take the same rope and then if I tie a bunch of knots in it and just, you know, just to kind of signify the tightness or stress and inflammation that it has been under, what you will start to see is that the length of the rope is going to start to shorten. And then as I try to, as even if I try to stand up straight, I can already feel the tension that is kind of pulling me backwards into that position known as lordosis. But most importantly, when I try to bend forward, there is just so much tightness and tension within this rope that I am limited and I don't actually want to bend forward anymore because I'm afraid that the band is going to snap. And when the back snap, that snaps, that kind of signifies what happens when your back actually goes out. And when these, again, when these muscles get so tight, not only will it restrict the, the lower back from getting into this rounded position, but this will cause pain and tightness when you do things that involve you trying to bend forward. And as we said earlier, this is what I believe causes, you know, back print, uh, problems and back injuries to get even worse. Again, it can contribute to the creation of things such as bulging discs or herniated discs or problems known as sciatica to develop. So fixing this lumbar flexion curve is not only important in terms of helping you release all that chronic stress and inflammation along your spine, but to also help you restore the proper mobility of your back so that you can be able to, again, not just touch your toes, but to do all of the things that involve you have to bend forward. And just so that you can help restore the proper function and mobility of your back to help you get it in the healthiest uh, state that it can possibly get into. Okay, so what we're going to do next is to share with you some of our favorite ways to actually help you fix and restore this lumbar flexion curve so that we can help you find the long-term relief that you were looking for. So before I get into the stretches and exercises like we have done in the previous modules, I just wanna talk a minute about some of the in-clinic treatments that we use to try to almost rapidly and quickly fix this lumbar flexion curve for some of our patients. And the reason why I want to talk about some of these in-clinic treatments is because this lumbar flexion curve problem can actually be quite difficult to fix on your own. While it is possible to fix and it is possible to restore this movement uh, through exercise if you know what you're doing, it isn't always a guarantee just because of how complex the spine can be. And what we have seen, what we've also seen in working with so many of our patients who have this problem is just how fast and how quickly we can actually restore this movement within just a couple of very simple therapy uh, sessions or using some of our, of our therapy techniques. Now, for safety reasons, I won't be showing you the exact techniques here, but I do at least want to show you some of the results that we've been able to achieve for some of our patients who we have been able to help successfully restore their lumbar flexion curve, just so you have an idea of what it is that I'm talking about within this, this video. All right, so the basic premise behind some of these techniques that we do here in the clinic just, to goes, just goes back to this analogy of this knotted up rope. And again, it is my belief that knowing how to release these knots in the chain is one of the most important principles of healing back pain that almost no one knows about. Again, so what you need to understand is that, you know, most people when they tell you to, that you have, when you have back pains, they tell you that you, that you need to stretch your back or you need to stretch your hamstrings, especially if you have back pain or difficulty bending forward. And the reason why this doesn't always work is because if I take this band here like before with a bunch of knots tied in the middle of it, if all I do is just stretch, then it might temporarily feel better because I'm trying to increase the length of the rope. 
But as you can clearly see, there's still a bunch of knots in the chain. All right, and then when I let go, the, the knot will just cause the back to just rebound back to where it was. And in some cases, if I try to you know, stretch too hard, it can actually make the knots tighter, which can cause much more pain and more pressure and can just make the problem worse, which are things that we obviously want to avoid. But a better approach is to actually learn to release the knots in the chain just by untying these knots. So if we can identify where these knots are in the chain and then perform the appropriate treatment to actually release the knot, then this is what's going to more rapidly and reliably restore the length in the chain and then followed up with by doing a couple of stretches afterwards is going to be a way more of an effective way of actually solving the problem as you can see here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is show you some examples of some of the patients that we've looked at just to kind of show you what this problem actually looks like real time. All right, so the first patient that I want to show you um, who is someone who had been living with back pain and spasms for about eight months. Uh, he couldn't stand up straight for more than a couple of minutes. He could barely go for a walk. He couldn't exercise as well. And as you can see here, his back muscles from, from, from his shoulders all the way down towards his tailbone are just locked in the spasm and just tightness. Kind of looks like a two by four up and down his back. He's got zero curvature. And this is just the prime example of the problem that we've been talking about. Now, for this guy, just within a session or two, using very specific soft tissue release techniques known as myofascial release and myofascial decompression, we were actually able to help him release that tightness pretty quickly. And then as you can see here, within just two sessions, his lumbar flexion curve was dramatically improved. He was already able to pretty much touch the floor with a much healthier lumbar flexion curve in his lower back. And while it is not typical to see the restoration of a fleshing curve happen this fast, it can indeed very, happen very quickly for some people. And I was actually pretty shocked by this case. But more importantly, as a result of restoring this motion, his back pain and tightness was almost 80% better just after the second session. And he was pretty much 100% better in recovery in about two months, just despite the fact that he had been having excruciating pain for about eight months prior. Or take another example of a guy who had been struggling with very severe back pain, pain in his tailbone, pain in his SI joint and his buttock for well over three years. Uh, he'd been seeing a chiropractor for many months. He'd get his back and his pelvis adjusted and it'd feel good temporarily, but his back pain would just come back and it just got worse to the point where he could barely stand, he could barely walk, he could barely exercise. Yet performing, again, some of these soft tissue release techniques, we were able to help him restore the normal flexion curvature within about five sessions and then we maintain the mobility in his back with some of these stretches and exercises that I want to show you. But the reason why I want to point this out is that this guy had been dealing with chronic back pain for about three years. And he just, the condition was getting worse and he was being told that he was going to need back surgery. And he had tried so many things to fix his condition. But once we address his lumbar flexion curve within just a couple of sessions, he was almost practically pain-free and back to exercising, weightlifting, uh, just within a matter of about two months. And we have so many more examples of, of this type of problem, and we see this problem almost every single day. But again, while I do believe that you know this flexion curve can be fixed through various stretches and exercises, we just know that by working with our clients and just how much faster and how much safer it can be um, to try to fix this problem if you work with somebody that knows how to release some of these knots or to release some of this tension. Now, with that said, I do want to get into showing you some of the best exercises that we typically teach our clients to try to fix this issue in the event that you aren't able to find a provider or in the event that it might be possible to actually fix some of these issues through exercise alone. Now, as a disclaimer, if you are someone who has a lot of nerve pain symptoms like sciatica or shooting pain down the leg or has significantly worse symptoms when you try to bend forward, you might not be a good candidate for these exercises. And that we usually recommend, you know, trying to focus on fixing some of the first things, uh, the first four things in, the, in some of the other modules. But, but if you have like a herniated disc or a bulging disc, we typically do not want to address this lumbar flexion curve first, or, or we don't want to introduce too much flexion into the system too early, since this can exacerbate the nerve pain, which is something we absolutely want, want to avoid. So if, again, if you are someone who has shooting pain into your hip or down your leg, or feel any form of numbness or tingling or burning or weakness in your leg, then you shouldn't be trying to do these exercises. You shouldn't be trying to treat this condition on your own. 
and you should be absolutely looking to look to find a medical professional that can help you safely navigate around this condition. So I hope this makes sense. So with that said, now let's get into teaching you some of our favorite stretches and exercises to try to help you fix this lumbar flexion curve problem. Okay, so the first thing that we want to show you in terms of teaching you how to restore this lumbar flexion curve is to help you learn how to use this foam roller device here um, so that you can start to learn how to identify and then start to release some of the knots or some of the tension that you may have in your back that could be causing your lower back to feel so tight and so tired all the time. Uh, so what Tui is going to do here is she's going to start by placing the roller just kind of right in the center of her upper back, kind of laying across ways like a T. And she's just going to start to just kind of roll very slowly up and down the muscles that roll that run along each side of her spine, known as the paraspinal muscles as seen here. And I would recommend that you only really want to start by working out the tension in this mid to upper back region first, especially if you're someone whose lower back is still feeling really tight or really kind of irritated. Um, we don't want to create too much stress down here, but by learning how to work out some of the knots and some of the kinks in this mid to upper back region should be helpful enough in terms of taking some of the pressure and stress off of your lower back. All right, so we recommend just kind of, again, just kind of moving very slowly up and down and just kind of work out some of these center muscles first just a couple of times. And again, Tweez is going at a nice pace. Um, I would recommend that you just kind of take your time with this. Sometimes we'll see people who just kind of rush through. They don't really take their time. Um, but this is a part of the body that is oftentimes neglected as we talked about in module two. And so many of our patients are often surprised by how tight or how sensitive some of these parts of the body feel once they actually start to learn how to put some pressure on it. All right. Okay, so uh, great job. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start to work on your shoulders. Um, yes, even your shoulders and also your shoulder blades. Uh, you know, we worked a, a, with a lot of people whose pain and tension in the lower back can be traced all the way up to tension and, or tightness they may have in their shoulders. So this is another very area, uh, very important area to focus on. Okay. And then as you start to move, you know, down below your shoulders, you can start to move down out towards the muscles along your sides on a muscle known as your lat muscle. Okay. The lat muscle is a muscle that, that attaches the backs of your shoulders all the way onto your lower back, onto this very thick, uh, broad piece of connective tissue known as your thoracolumbar fascia. So lats are another very important area to focus on to learn how to release some of that muscle tension off of your back to take some of the pressure off of your lower back, okay? Okay, so let's have Tweed kind of now work on uh, the other side, all right? It's very important that you are as thorough as you can. Um, it's very common, again, that we see some people just find tension in areas that they just don't expect, you know, into the sides of the shoulders or the top of the shoulders that could have some type of stress or some type of pull on their lower back. So just, again, important just to make sure that you're very thorough and just kind of learn how to just, again, just kind of re get reconnected to these parts of your body by just kind of rolling up and down this foam roller nice and slow, okay? And even if you find a spot that just feels more sensitive or more painful or tighter than the others, then you can just kind of stay right there sometimes and just try to use the roller just to apply some deep pressure into that spot. And this might also help kind of help release some of that tightness and tension uh, much faster by just applying a, um, a bit of pressure over a long period of time on some of these areas that you may feel more sensitive than others, okay? Okay, so um, that uh, should do it. So that is it on how to perform just a very quick, you know, muscle release using a foam roller. Again, um, I'm not claiming that this is you know, going to be a quick fix or magic solution to all these problems, but it is something that can absolutely help. It's quite safe and very easy to do. And as long as you can tolerate it, um, you know, this is just one of the best things that you can do, especially for someone who is trying to do things on your own, um, just trying to uh, help you give you some more tools to uh, develop a much healthier spine. Okay, all right, so that is it for the first exercise. Now let's move on to the next. Okay, so the next stretch that I wanna show you is an exercise known as the cat stretch. Um, so the cat stretch is probably one of the most basic stretches and exercises that is very commonly taught and described, um, but I find that most people uh, just don't know how to do this uh, exercise correctly. So our goal is to show you how to perform this exercise with proper form um, so that you can get maximum benefits and to help you also focus on helping you restore your lumbar flexion curve as well. 
Okay. So um, what Tweed's going to do here, she's going to start by uh, being on her, her hands and her knees. And then she's just going to try to create a forward bending curvature across her spine, as seen here. And we want her to put her focus and her concentration on trying to create a forward bending curvature across her lower back right through here. Again, this is the area that we want to focus on. And since most people are very tight or very restricted to this area, we want you to focus on trying to create more movement through this area through our stretching and through our exercising. Okay. All right, so let's reset. Now, when you do this exercise correctly, what you first want to focus on is by just kind of tucking your hip and your pelvis downwards like so, All right? Almost pretending like you have a tail and you're just trying to kind of like tuck your tail underneath you. Um, this is going to teach you how to unlock and, learn, and start to learn how to move your pelvis. And then what you should start to focus on is trying to engage and contract your abdominal muscles right in the front of your stomach as seen right here. All right. And the reason why I want you, you to, to work your abdominal muscles is because these abdominal muscles are the muscles that help create this number of flexion movement. So the more you learn how to contract these muscles, you will also start to restore some of that curvature in your lumbar spine, as well as strengthen your abdominals at the same time. Okay. All right, so the most common mistake that we'll see people make when they try to do this exercise is that they just aren't focusing enough on their lumbar region and they just kind of go through the motions. And what ends up happening is, is something like this will happen where when the person tries to do the stretch, they will, they will just create a huge curvature in their mid back or through their shoulder region where their lumbar spine just kind of stays flat. All right, and this is what we want to avoid. And these are some of the mistakes that we see, um, you know, time and time again, where the person just, again, is not putting enough of their focus or attention on the lower back or lumbar region. All right. So if we just demonstrate properly one more time. So as you can see, the different here, you can see much more of a curvature across the lower back. But what you're going to see is if you're someone who is really tight or really stiff through there, you might have a hard time creating that curve. And instead, you might feel some tightness or some stretch or some tension across those muscles along, along your lower back. And if that is what you're feeling, then that is good. That is what we want. Um, this is what we want to achieve as long as you, again, can feel your abdominals working. And you can feel a nice, gentle stretch across your lower back. That is how we know you're doing this exercise correctly. But if you are someone who is experiencing any sharp pain or feeling any pain just kind of shooting into your hip or down into your leg, uh, this is a sign that you may not be ready for this exercise. Um, I would recommend that you would work on the first modules first or just try to find someone like a physical therapist who can better assist you in making sure that you're doing the right exercises for you and your situation. All right. Okay, so that is it for the um, cat stretch exercise. Um, now let's move on to the next exercise for today. Okay, so the next exercise we want to show you is a child's pose stretch. Um, this is another very simple exercise that you can do. It's another very basic stretch that we also sometimes see in yoga classes. And again, this is a stretch known as a child's pose stretch. Um, again, very simple, very relaxing stretch, uh, very easy to do and very safe to do in, in most situations as well. Okay, uh, so please go ahead and reset. Now, the first thing that we're going to have you do is just kind of start on your hands and your knees, uh, just like how we did the cat stretch. And then first, uh, just kind of tuck your tail under and just kind of create a little bit of flexion through your lower back. It doesn't need to be as, as tight or as maximally contracted as we did in the cat stretch, but just enough to make sure that you are creating a little bit of the flexion curve. And from there, just kind of sit your hips down towards your heels, making sure that you keep your arms and your hands in place. Uh, go ahead and relax your head and your neck down towards the floor as well. And again, you should feel a nice stretch across your back. You should feel a nice stretch across your shoulders. And then to get even more stretching out of this uh, position, just start to slowly kind of crawl your hands forward as well. This will further kind of stretch and elongate some of those muscles along your back that attach all the way um, towards your shoulders. Again, it's a very nice, very simple way just to get some, you know, some movement and some stretching and just some elongation across all of those muscles across your back. Okay. All right. So go ahead and reset and let's demonstrate it uh, one more time. So again, starting on your hands and your knees, um, just starting with a little bit of a tail tuck and a little bit of lumbar flexion like so, and just rocking your hips down towards your heels, um, and then just relaxing your head and your neck down. And you can hang out there for a couple seconds, and then uh, you can then start to kind of crawl both of your fingers and both of your hands a little bit further forward, uh, just to kind of create more of a stretch. All right. 
um, and hold it there for about 10 seconds. You know, you take your time with this. There's no rush. Um, just make sure that you maintain a consistent breathing pattern and just try to exhale and try to just uh, lean into a little bit more of a stretch on your exhale. Um, that will just enhance the uh, overall stretch. Okay, three, two, one, and then go ahead and reset. Now, um, next thing we're going to do is just kind of show you one of our favorite modifications. Um, this is a child's pose with a lat stretch. Uh, so what Twee's going to do is she's going to just start on her hands and her knees, and she's going to bring her left arm all the way out towards her left, and then she's going to place her right hand right on top of her left hand. And then what she's going to do is just try to kind of lean um, into her armpit and just kind of lean all of her body weight back towards the center. And that's just going to uh, significantly increase the level of stretching that she's going to get across her lap. Uh, go ahead and sit your hips back down towards your uh, heels tree. Perfect. All right, again, you should feel a nice stretch just along the side through here. Um, this is a great stretch for anyone that has uh, pain or tightness, especially on one side. And again, this is going to help you focus on a very important muscle known as the lat, which has you know, very critical attachments along your spine. And again, this is just one of our personal favorite exercises that we like to do, and also one of the uh, favorite exercises for some of our patients as well. Three, two, one, go ahead and reset. And let's just demonstrate it one more time on the other side. So this time the uh, right hand will come out to the side, um, and her hands will just kind of uh, lock on top. And just trying to kind of shift her weight back towards the center while keeping her hands and her arms kind of planted in place. And this will, again, help you get a nice stretch right along the uh, side muscles along the side of your body, um, which should help, again, uh, takes, hopefully take some pressure and tension off of your lower back and just increase your overall range of motion and mobility within that posterior chain. Um, just to be able to help you uh, develop a, a much healthier uh, range of motion and mobility across your spine as well. All right, so three, two, one, and reset. All right, so that is it for our, our child's pose stretch, especially, uh, as well as the uh, child's pose uh, stretch with the lat stretch as well. Okay, so the last exercise we want to show you today in this module is a very simple seated toe touch stretch. So a lot of our patients like this exercise because it is quite simple to do, but really helps people who have had a lot of pain or have kind of lost confidence in doing movements that involve them having to bend forward. And it is much easier to do this stretch than trying to do a bunch of, you know, standing toe touch stretches or things that might be a little bit more strenuous. Okay, so to go ahead and reset. So what Tweet's going to do here is to start by kind of sitting towards the edge of a chair. You could do this doing it off of a couch or a sofa or off the bed as well. And all you need to do is just to slide your hands from your knees very slowly down your shins as far as you feel comfortable. Okay, You might feel a little bit of stretch or a little bit of tightness in your lower back, but that is fine. Um, from there, uh, once you kind of get stuck, just take a nice deep breath in. And on your exhale, just kind of slide your hands a little further down your shins and hold it there. And then repeat that same thing just a couple more times. Again, just uh, when you get stuck, just kind of go down as far as you can by using your exhale just to kind of guide you through the stretch like so. Okay. Um, again, this movement might be a little bit difficult at first, especially if, if you have been avoiding doing any sort of forward bending movements. But as long as you don't have any sharp pain or have any pain shooting into your hip or down into your leg, uh, this is an exercise that should be completely fine for you to do. All right, so uh, when you want to come back up, just kind of use your hands to kind of slowly climb your uh, back way back up uh, from your legs and just use your hands uh, to get back up and then we'll, we'll repeat one more time, okay? So again, just bend as far as you feel comfortable um, and then just, you know, once you feel you have hit your limits, um, just stay there, take a couple of the breaths and on your exhale, again, just try to move into a slightly deeper stretch like show. Just kind of slowly into your hands a little bit further down your shins. Um, and then eventually close it down towards your toes and hopefully eventually towards the floor as well. Perfect. Okay, just climb your way uh, back up. And um, what we're going to do next is just to show you this exercise from just an alternative uh, view and angle, just so that you can see what it looks like from the side as well. Okay, so we're just going to demonstrate it uh, one more time. So you can see here, it's just kind of sitting at the edge of her chair. And just kind of slowly uh, starting with the hands on her knees and just sliding your hands down towards your shins. 
And again, you should feel, again, a bit of a nice stretch along your back, but you shouldn't be pushing through any sort of pain, um, especially if you have any sort of hip pain or leg pain while you do this. Um, this just means your back isn't ready for this type of motion yet. And these movements are something that you might want to focus on later in your rehab process, especially if you have, you know, nerve pain or sciatic and nerve pain. And you should really just feel like a nice stretch along your back. And it should just kind of feel uh, good just to kind of um, bend this far, especially if you haven't been able to do a motion like this in quite some time. Um, and uh, again, just use your breathing as a guide just to help guide you through the stretch and just go as far as you can. All right. Let's just reset and repeat one more time. So just use your hands to help yourself get back up. And let's demonstrate it uh, one last time. All right. Tweet's doing a great job of, again, just kind of keeping a nice consistent breathing pattern. And again, you don't have to go all the way down towards your toes or towards the floor if you can't, especially if it's the first time. Just go to your limits. And again, uh, once you kind of hit your limit, just use your breathing just to see if your body will allow you to go any further. Um, again, just take your time with this. Uh, there's no rush. Um, we just want to help you make just slow, consistent progress over time and make sure that, again, you're not, not pushing through any uh, intense pain or any symptoms. Again, just feel a nice stretch along your back. And just the ability to regain this ability to bend forward um, is just one of the most important things that I feel like um, anybody uh, with chronic back pain should be able to do at some point. All right. Three, two, one, and slowly uh, come back up. All right. So that is it for our module five, which is also the conclusion of our entire um of uh, treating the root causes of lower back pain course. Um, I hope that this helps. And the last thing I just want to reiterate is that every single person is different. You know, no two people are alike. My goal with this, these exercises and all these modules is just to share with you some of the most common problems that we see here in the clinic and the strategies that we use to correct them. And as much as I hope these exercises can be of use to all of you, um, you know, uh, just, just make sure that you are working alongside with someone like a physical therapist if you just aren't sure, if you are having pain. Um, and again, um, there's a lot of people out there that can help, but I hope that, again, this guy just kind of gets you started in the right direction just to be able to see back pain from a much bigger and broader perspective, all right? Uh, so take care, everybody. Uh, hope you do well and have a uh, great time and a wonderful day.